It's very difficult to quantify degree of liver function. With the kidneys, it's possible to estimate glomerular filtration rate to get a general idea of the patient's renal function. But there isn't an analogous number available for the liver. Instead, we have to look at what the liver is supposed to be doing and how well it's doing it. The liver is the organ that manufactures clotting factors. If the liver isn't functioning properly, fewer of those clotting factors are produced and the patient's prothrombin time may increase. This is the same test that's used to monitor warfarin therapy, so it's pretty easy to get. You'll also see the prothrombin time expressed as an international normalized ratio, which is a way of increasing consistency of results from different labs. A typical INR is about 1.0. If the INR is greater than 1.7, that might indicate liver dysfunction. The liver also manufactures albumin. If a patient has impaired liver function, the serum albumin concentration may decrease. A serum albumin concentration of less than 3.5 grams per deciliter might be evidence of liver dysfunction, but it could also be a sign of malnutrition or other disease states. The liver excretes bilirubin. If the liver is failing, the serum bilirubin concentrations might increase. Normal total bilirubin is usually less than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Total bilirubin concentrations greater than 2 milligrams per deciliter might be evidence of liver failure, but it also might not. There's other possibilities. Bilirubin is a breakdown product of hemoglobin, which is released when red blood cells die. Bilirubin is not very water soluble. In order to make it easier to excrete, the liver attaches a glucuronide moiety to it. That separates the positive and negative charges of the molecule and makes it more water soluble. It's then possible for the liver to excrete the bilirubin into the intestines via the bile duct. That gives us three major areas of pathology that can increase bilirubin concentrations. These are referred to as prehepatic, hepatic, and post-hepatic. Diseases where red blood cells break down at an abnormally high rate, such as hemolytic anemias, might produce more bilirubin than the liver can easily remove. Some drugs, such as cephalosporins and NSAIDs, may induce the patient's immune system to attack red blood cells, breaking them down and increasing bilirubin concentrations. This is an example of a prehepatic problem. A hepatic problem would be evidenced by the inability of the liver to conjugate the bilirubin to a glucuronide moiety. This might be caused by cirrhosis. A post-hepatic problem would be caused by the liver being unable to get the bilirubin through the bile duct. This might be caused by a stone blocking the duct or drugs that cause cholestasis. In order to tell the difference, it's helpful to break down the total bilirubin concentration into conjugated and unconjugated bilirubin. Because of the tests that's used, these are sometimes referred to as direct and indirect bilirubin concentrations, respectively. If the conjugated bilirubin concentration is normal or high, then the problem is probably not the liver being unable to function properly. After all, it's conjugating the bilirubin like it should. If the conjugated bilirubin concentration is high, the problem is most likely that the bilirubin isn't moving from the liver to the intestine. Some sort of cholestasis or blockage is likely. This would be post-hepatic. This diagnosis can be supported by checking the alkaline phosphatase concentrations in the blood. Alkphos is found in the cells lining the biliary tract. If those cells are damaged by an obstruction or cholestasis, Alkphos is released into the blood at abnormally high levels. A normal conjugated bilirubin, but an elevated unconjugated bilirubin, makes it more likely that the problem is due to overproduction of bilirubin due to hemolysis. This is prehepatic. If the conjugated bilirubin is low, however, it's quite possible the problem is the liver itself. The liver isn't conjugating the bilirubin the way it should, and that might be evidence of liver dysfunction. There are also tests that tell us that the liver is being damaged, but don't actually tell us how well it's functioning. Alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase are found in liver cells. When those hepatocytes are damaged, AST and ALT leak out into the blood. 
even though AST and ALT are sometimes referred to as liver function tests, they don't really tell us how well the liver is functioning. They tell us the liver is being actively damaged, which can lead to decreased function. Drugs that are known to be hepatotoxic are often monitored using AST and ALT. Ketoconazole is an antifungal that's known to damage the liver. The package insert says ALT should be checked every week the patient is receiving ketoconazole. If the concentration of ALT increases, the ketoconazole should be stopped and the patient checked for liver damage. While we can't easily directly measure liver function, we can look at biomarkers to give us an idea as to how well the liver is manufacturing clotting factors in albumin. We can get an idea as to how well the liver is conjugating and excreting by checking bilirubin concentrations. And we can tell whether it's being actively damaged by checking AST and ALT.